문제와 그 이후에 경기를 풀어나가는 그 운영 능력까지 네. 여러 가지로 이제 동시 다발적인 멀티패스팅을 적응전에서 가장 화려하게 보여주던 그때의 모습입니다. 김민철 선수의 속한 조가 저그 3명 있는 조예요. 이연석 3저그 조예요. 끝날 뚫리면 끝날. 저그대 저그전 극복하면서 김민철 선수는 세계에 올라가서 우승을 목표로 싸울 수 있는 그 기회가 열렸고. What's up, everybody? Welcome to match two in the round of eight. Uh, and this is one that I think both Artosis and I are probably the most excited for. It's, I think, the hardest one to call. It may have the highest quality games. Be super Sasolki. Yeah, this is this is for me the absolute best match in this round without doubt. And it's it doesn't have a Terran player in it, right? So that, that right. even seems weird in and of itself. But you know, Bisu has been looking fantastic. His PVZ on point. And then you have Sulky, who has been one of, if not the best Zerg for years now. Literally for years. Uh, so I think it's going to be awesome. Um, it's going to be so sick, man. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very hard to predict as well. Yeah. No, I, I, it's, uh, it's, I think it's going to be five games, at least four games. I can't imagine that this would be a 3 0 for sure. Yeah. That's, that seems impossible. Like, and, I don't know if you would agree with this, Tasteless, but I feel like tonight the winner will be dictated by how on Solky is. Because Solky, I think, okay. there, he has a little bit of up and down with how well he'll play a series. Uh, that, that's just kind of the gut feeling I get. I feel like Bisu has just been completely solid in this matchup and always looks good at PBZ lately. Whereas Solky, I'm like, occasionally he'll just drop a set and I'm like, what was what was that? You know, where in other yeah. times he looks like literally the best macro zerg in the world. Yeah, Sulky, uh, you know, mostly looks like uh, so, so solid and, and so planned out. Every once in a while he has a, a weird one. Um, mm. Bisu, I think, is, is so consistent and scary looking and, and really he, he makes the whole matchup look like it's actually the Protoss controlling the zerg. And I feel like if you talk to a lot of Protoss players, they don't get that feeling from the matchup. But Bisu, mm. he makes it look, uh, he makes zergs look very brittle. Um, He's always able to throw them off balance and really get in there and kill them. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how these two engage each other. Another level, h a s i k w a 함께하는 ASL 시즌 14 8강 두 번째 경기로 인사드립니다. 안녕하세요, 이영경입니다. 자 어제 펼쳐졌던 8강 첫 번째 경기 김지성 선수가 본인의 최근 상승세를 다시 한번 증명해 내면서 생애 첫 4강의 달콤한 순간을 맛봤습니다. 자 오늘은 김지성 선수의 4강 매치업 상대가 결정되는 날입니다. 김태경 선수와 김민철 선수가 경기 준비하고 있는데요. 만나서 이야기 나눠보겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요 반갑습니다. 네, 안녕하세요. 자, 먼저 김태경 선수. 8강 상대가 김민철 선수로 정해졌습니다. 네. 어, 조추첨 당시의 개인 방송을 통해서 어, 좀 비장함이 느껴지는 멘트를 하셨더라고요. 아, 그래, 해보자, 민철아. 그러니까 이런 식의 멘트를 하셨던 걸로 제가 기억하고 있는데 8강 상대 김민철 선수로 결정됐을 때의 심경은 좀 어떠셨나요? 어, 일단... 그래도 제일 만나고 싶은 선수였던 게 민철이긴 하거든요. 영환이는 좀 저의 천적이고 어, 일정이 같은 경우는 좀 서로 연습을 했기 때문에 스타일을 많이 안다고 생각해서 좀 만나기 싫었고 민철이를 만나고 싶었는데 막상 만나고 나니까 솔직히 저거 중에 제일 잘하거든요, 음. 민철이가. 그래가지고 아, 연습하는데 좀 민철이라면 이게 될까 라는 생각이 들더라고요. 너무 잘해가지고. 네, 좀 힘든 싸움일 것 같아요. 어, 연습하면서도 약간은 불안했다. 왜냐, 상대가 김민철이었기 때문에 라는 답변을 김태경 선수가 해주셨는데요. 김민철 선수는 8강 진출 당시에 어, 8강에선 좀 프로토스를 만나고 싶다라고 말씀을 하셨어요. 그런데 또 상대가 그냥 프로토스라고 생각하시면 안될 저그전 스페셜리스트로 불리는 또 김태경 선수를 만나게 됐는데요. 어떠셨나요? 어, 토스가 만나고 싶긴 했어요. 근데 태경이 형 살짝 부담스럽긴 했거든요. 그래서 그 마지막 D조에 
다른 토스가 올라오길 원했었는데 어, 그래도 연습 많이 해가지고 자신은 있습니다. 두 선수의 상대 전적을 좀 살펴보면 온라인과 오프라인이 좀 상이합니다. 온라인에서는 김민철 선수가 좀 우위를 점하고 있지만 중요한 순간 오프라인 무대에서는 김태경 선수가 좀 승리를 거뒀던 기억이 있으실 것 같거든요. 이 부분이 김태경 선수에게 좀 자신감으로 작용할 수도 있을 것 같은데 어떠신가요? 어... 근데 그때 당시에는 민철이가 좀 못했다고 생각했어요. 그래서 제가 이긴 게 있는 것 같은데 솔직히 요새는 잘해가지고 오프라인도 쉽지 않을 것 같아요. 김태경 선수, 최근에 김민철 선수의 기세를 좀 인정하고 있는 듯한 답변을 계속해서 해주고 계시는데요. 김민철 선수는 사실 좀 김태경 선수에게 중요한 길목에서 꺾였던 기억 좀 상대적으로 부담스럽지 않으신가요? 어, 네. 그렇게 막 졌을 때 기억이 막 떠오르고 그러진 않더라고요. 오히려 이제 그냥 온라인에서 했던 그런 게임들만 기억이 나고 그래서 어, 오프라인에서 졌던 건다 잊었습니다. 이번 시즌 김민철 선수의 기세가 워낙 좋기 때문에 또 4강 진출을 예상하고 계시는 분들도 많은데 김민철 선수의 생각은 어떠신가요? 어, 이번 시즌 여기서 8강이 제일 힘든 시즌이 아닐까 생각이 들기는 해요. 어... 요, 이번 시즌 8강만 이번에 태경영만 잡아내면 은뭐 저도 좋은 결과가 나올 것 같은 어... 생각이 들어요. 많은 분들이 이번 시즌 폴팀 8강에 오늘 경기가 가장 꿀잼 매치업이 될것 같다라고 생각하고 계시는 분들도 많으십니다. 아마 좀 풀세트까지 가는 접전을 기대하고 계실 것 같은데 김태경 선수는 오늘 세트 스코어 어떨 것 같으신가요? 어, 3대0 예상합니다. 3대0의 승리를 예상하시겠죠, 당연히. <웃음> 3대0 승리요. 어, 네. 어, 후반까지 가지 않겠다라는 결의가 좀 느껴지는데요. 김민철 선수 어떠세요? 저도 뭐 4, 5경기 연습을 안 해가지고 어 3경기까지 어 연습을 해가지고요. 네. 3대0 예상해봅니다. 와, 두 선수 이 1, 2, 3세트에 모든 걸 쏟아붓는 연습을 해오신 것 같습니다. 그만큼 각오가 남다르실 것 같은데요. 끝으로 각오를 청해 들어보겠습니다. 김태경 선수. 항상 대회에 나올 때마다 오늘이 마지막일 수 있다는 생각으로 나와요. 제가 또 언제 나올 수 있을지 솔, 솔직히 다음 시즌 때 예선에서 떨어질 수 있잖아요. 그렇기 때문에 오늘 진짜 마지막이라는 생각으로 최선을 다하도록 하겠습니다. 네, 김민철 선수. 네, 뭐 저도 뭐 항상 대회 나올 때마다 느끼는 거지만 이번 시즌은 다르다라는 생각을 항상 가지고 있거든요. 근데 진짜 이번 시즌은 다른 것 같아요. 오늘 좀 확실히 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 두 선수 후회 없는 8강의 멋진 경기 기대하겠습니다. 인터뷰 고맙습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 네, ASL 시즌4팀 8강 두 번째 경기를 앞두고 있는 김태경 선수 그리고 김민철 선수와 이야기 나눠봤습니다. 과연 어떤 선수가 4강에 올라 김지성 선수와 만날 수 있을지 8강 두 번째 경기 지금부터 함께 만나보시죠. 네. Let's just get into this match, man. I'm so excited. Uh, yeah. We're going to start this off on Butter 2, going to Vermeer, Nemesis, Sylphid 3, and Odyssey uh, in this series. I hope that we get a lot of insane games here. I do feel like Sulky, even though he is capable of cheesing, I, I do feel like he, uh, if you put it on a spectrum of like macro versus uh, aggression, he is mm. a little bit more of a macro Zerg. He seems to be yeah. very strategic. Um, so I think a lot of this. Uh, each of these games should be dictated by how aggressive Bisu is and where he wants to push. Yeah, he does have to be careful, though, because Sulky is willing to do complete coin flip builds in a best of sure. five. And he has defended them in such a Chadly way in interviews, too. Like, I will literally never forget his terrible seven pool that did absolutely nothing against Light in KSL. And then he was asked in the interview, he's like, yeah, no, that was, that was smart of me to do. And it's like, okay. <laughs> but... I mean, if it, you know, if, if Bisu tries to get too aggressive, I can see Solki coming over the top with him with aggression and, and maybe battering him back. Yeah. I mean, um, the thing with Bisu, I feel like it's going to be nothing but fast expand, aggressive builds, forge first, gate first. I don't think we're going to have any of that kind of weird mini style games where he, he does something super eccentric and out there. Uh, and I think these fast expand builds, again, it's going to be like six gates, then eight gates, pressure builds. It's not going to be like mini where we see them get like four gates and then take a third base. And I'm like, how's that possible? But he gets away with it. Um, Bisu is sort of the um, the foundation, the guy that created 
uh, and this is very important, by the way, because you don't get many of these in any RTS, but he's the guy that sort of sorted out this entire matchup over, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a decade and a half ago. Um, and everybody's basically been following his his structure ever since. Yeah, yeah, he, he is like the, like, what do they call him, the revolutionist, because he literally changed the matchup. He changed what everyone was talking about in PBZ forever. And everything has been built upon what he did so many years ago. So uh, literally you don't have a more important Protoss in the history of the game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we just saw as well the win percentages, which I thought was really cool. Bisu actually has passed Mini for win rate in this matchup. Mini's at 60% and Bisu's at 62, and they both have played a ridiculous amount of games. So that's insane. Like 50 games in, he's at 62%. Number That's one, so sick. yeah, he's number one Protoss in this matchup still, which is so crazy after you know how much we've cast him and how much we've seen him play. And Solky is at fifty-eight percent win rate, fourth place for Zerg, right? So that's insane as well. Like these are literally two of the absolute best ever to play the game, going at it in this matchup where they both have ludicrous win rates. Yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Abisu is is a guy. He's got a very in-your-face style. And, and mm -hmm. that will be the first part that Sulky's going to have to address. Because <laughs> Sulky's got a lot of very good yeah. strategies. But the thing is, if you can kind of throw the Zerg off, it, it's very hard for the Zerg to recover. If you can mm -hmm. take out a couple drones, you get a couple zealots behind mineral patches, you know, you supply block them a couple times with Corsairs. That's how Bisu likes to play, is he brings the Zerg to their knees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and is he going to be able to do that against Solky, though? Because Solky is going to, I mean, he's going to have this very well planned. I'm sure that he is really wanting to finally take down an ASL. But I tell you, nothing would be more hype than Bisu making it to the finals, man. That would oh, be, dude, I would that would be that. another another universe. That would be a real story, man. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to be hopping into this match in just a second here. Uh, and what should be a pretty dramatic series, and I think a pretty pivotal series for the entire round of four and moving onward is, is both these guys are so strong and, and frankly so viable to be champions of this tournament it, it should be a lot of fun yeah uh i i'm excited i just want it to start i don't know what the hell we're waiting for I know. at this point I think, I think just start the games produ production is trying to get as many of these signs on camera mm. as possible bisu does draw a huge crowd yeah uh, let's not forget what i i can't remember which group it was but where once his games are done, this studio looked empty afterwards. <laughs> people, yeah. He's one of these guys where people show up, watch his games, and literally don't watch the rest of the show, like after he's done. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got that kind of a draw for it. So, Well, I actually have it on good authority, Tasteless, that once this, once Bisu's match here tonight is over, that this studio's going to empty out completely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, a lot of people coming down here, a lot of people super excited to see him uh, perform and you know, man, I mean, as a Protoss player myself, this was a guy that really uh, figured out a lot of problems for me personally in the matchup. I mean, I remember yeah. being a kid and in the bedroom, my brother and me shared and watching this happen and being like, oh, my God, is that how you do it? Is, mm. is, that, is this just going to work and you can do it consistently? I mean, this is the guy that basically taught everybody how to fast expand against Zerg. Um, I'll talk more about that when we get into the game, but I mean... Again, really changing an entire matchup that was played one way before it is now approached an entirely different way after. We're going to go to Butter here for map one. We should also keep in mind it, it, there is an optional proxy gate, although that seems to be almost completely out of the tournament meta mm -hmm. nowadays. But, you know, Bisu could be someone who would bring that back in. But I think we're probably just going to have a lot of one gate and forge expands. I think Bisu is very confident in sort of the straightforward way to play the game and really seizing the matchup into mid-game and then late-game after that. Yeah, I'd imagine he is going to use a lot of gateway expansion openers here tonight, and I want to see what Solky does to try to counteract that. Uh, that's one of his really big super strengths is how well he utilizes those early Zealots for pressure. So I'm ready for it, man. I, I We keep stalling it out, but we just got to get this started. This is this is I going know, to right? be an amazing match, and I I want the games just to appear in my head. Well, they're going to appear in front of your face now. Artosis, we're ready. Stop passing it off. We know what this camera shot means, um, guys. This is game one in a best of five, a pivotal one uh, in the ASL as we have Bisu versus Solki.
in the bottom right, we have Bisu. And in the top right, we have Sulky. What is on his chair? What is that? It's like his chair has a headband on or something. Oh, I didn't I didn't notice, actually. I'll, no, we'll, I'll, we'll get a shot of it later. Maybe there's a bag hanging off of it. I'm always amazed, by the way, when I see pro gamers that have, like, their jacket propped on the chair or... Uh, <laughs> Like a backpack mm -hmm. hanging off the, the thing because it's it's such a like Korean PC cafe mm -hmm. move where like we actually have a green room where they can put all their stuff. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, like don't you want to like not have like a, a, a jacket hanging off of the back of your chair if you can? You um, know, I I understand what you're saying, tasteless. But if I could give a little counterpoint here, yeah, I actually would keep all my stuff with me, which is funny because I've worked you know, at the GSL studio since it opened. But there's some sort of, like, having my things with me eliminates a level of anxiety and stress in the back of my brain, if that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, and I know that you don't have this because I see you put your phone on the table and go to the bathroom and stuff like that. But, like, I like to have my stuff with me. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> know. It's just... <laughs> I'm different, I guess. No, I, I, maybe it's like just a comfort thing too. If you if you go to PC cafes and play StarCraft and you're used to having your like your backpack hanging hanging off your chair, yeah, maybe that's yeah. just that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to be a forge expand. We should point out that there are uh, threats that can be created from cannon rushes behind the minerals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's funny because cannon rushes were like actually one of the first you know real to be honest, strategies in the game when the, when it first came out. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, then eventually everybody abandoned it because, you know, it, obviously if you're good, you can stop a cannon rush. But then when the uh, Forge Expand came out, uh, players started to, to tie in cannon rushes again, or at least the option of that. And that's mm -hmm. probably why we're seeing Solki take this hatchery here and not the one behind the minerals because he can be punished uh, by, for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this was a pool first. And Bisu goes for Nexus into the cannon. One thing I, I, I need to ask your opinion about here, Tasteless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Bisu, I really think of him as a gateway expander much more uh, recently. Like, he's really put on some fantastic pressures with those gateway expands. But he did choose in game one here to do the forge expand. Do you do you have, like, a reason you think he may have been like, oh, this is, this is good for the first map? Well, I mean, I think it's because you can cannon rush behind the, the the minerals, like I was saying. Okay. I mean, it's just it's 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 a, it makes this option. Uh, and look, I mean, even the best zerks in the world will die if they don't handle that perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and a cannon rush, by the way, behind the minerals, totally different from like making one like on the corner outside their main and like crawling cannons forward, like really bad players do. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's what it is. I mean, we saw this also on Eclipse for a while, where everybody would, uh, you know. Forge first, and then eventually Gateway first came back into play because the cannon rushes had, had sort of uh, their efficiency had expired as people got good at dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, 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 Forge expand is extremely strong. You know, you, you get to get uh, your workers out. You don't have to try to juggle zealots uh, across the map. Um, I would say, in some ways, as long as you can manage watching out for cheese, it's one of the easier builds to do because you're just sort yeah. of. You're laying down all your pieces and setting up all your buildings, and um, you know you're going to set up for a pretty strong push. Also, uh, with this build especially, there's a lot of things you can do behind this. You know, it, it's very flexible. Um, you know, you could do something crazy like go for two stargates, or you could go, you know, for no stargates, one stargate. There's a lot of different ways you can approach it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bisu is going to be uh, trickling zealots out here. Uh, and trying to put on pressure. And Sulky is going to go for a Hydralisk bus. Yeah, he canceled the layer, right? Into that yeah. Hydralisk den yeah. after the probe left. So obviously Sulky needs to stop that probe from coming back in. He brings up flanking Zerglings. We're not going to watch the most important thing happening here. Uh, but he does get the probe. Yeah, he's... Uh, this is, by the way, it's so simple, but it is one of the stronger moves you can do is if you get scouted as the Zerg and you kill the probe is you just you just shift your tech entirely. You'd be amazed, like you can beat some of the extremely strong players uh, yeah. out there if you can switch tech and then and then you know how to punish the Protoss. Now what is doing, he's hiding a Zealot. Now this can kill workers, but it can also scout Hydralisks here. By the way, one Dragoon and a probe blocking this. This is kind of a funny. Yeah, uh, that's really weird to see the Dragoon entrance. right now. That's not something that I would have expected. 
I I feel like I've actually never seen this. Is like yeah. you made one dragoon, and the dragoon was before or before the second. It was Zealot, Zealot Dragoon Zealot, which it, I've never seen that personally. I don't think. I'm going to be honest with the the viewers for a second. I don't really know the the rules for Wallens on this map. I mean. Every map has all these different rules. Oh. You gotta basically like go into the game and figure it out. But maybe the dragoon can block, and the zealot just can't fully block that. Uh, that makes sure. sense. You know what? I bet you're right. That I I know that exact spot too. Uh, yeah, that's it is a little bit wider than a zealot, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, really cool so. move from yeah. Bisu. Yeah. So that's kind of funny to see him do that. Uh, but really, this is all moot because uh, what's yeah. most important is that Sulky is going to come down here and try to end this game instantly. Uh, and we have one cannon. Note that the cannon is two uh, building spaces back behind the, the gateway, which means the Hydralis can't run up and hit it. So the, the safety mechanism for the Protoss is that these two buildings in the front have to be killed off. Oh, but he's going to target the Dragoon, oh. and Dragoons die very fast in moments like that. So he actually can get, I think this game is ended. Yeah. He's going to get on top of this. And well. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think this game's done, man. Unless we can get a Dark yeah. Templar out here, the Overlord should be killed off. So maybe he can do that. But th this is uh, almost a fatal amount of damage here because mm. you know the Hydralis could basically dodge. Oh my God! And he's doing it perfectly. The Lings yeah. are hitting the cannon. Uh, this is going to be a short and brutal game here. The probes just cannot, you know, hold their own against the Hydras. That's going to be a GG game one. In a neck-breaking maneuver, Soul King, you know, he showed the layer, killed the probe, canceled the layer, went into that. And I'll tell you what, we were talking about that Dragoon. It's important to note that Dragoons, when confronted with Zerglings and Hydralis, they die very fast. I know that Zealots also die very fast, but we're talking about fractions of a second mm -hmm. that will basically decide how much time humanly possible for a player trying to control things in the game. That he has. Oh, there's that. Look at that. What's on his chair? What is it? He's like got a fanny pack hanging off the back of the chair. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, I that, think it's his keyboard bag. Actually, they've started oh. making keyboard bags again for some of the teams. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. So, yeah. I mean, basically. Yeah, that's what that is. Hundred percent. A bit. Basically, man. Um, you know, uh, Soul Key did what I think a lot of good players have to do in a best of five against a solid Protoss. There, he he went for that bust. And that Dragoon was the squishy point, man. Even though Zealots do die fast, I think if you've, if you've tried to stop those kinds of rushes, you sort of know what I mean, where you really just have like a like a second and a half maybe to try to grab probes and block that. Once the Zerglings get on top of the cannons and they keep those Zerglings alive, you pretty much end. So let's watch what he does here. He comes in. And, um, I mean, yeah, look at that one drone mining at yeah. that other base. It's funny because the Zealot went to the third base, which was actually the first base that Sulky took. Yeah. And that had plenty of drones, so I think but, that threw him off as well. By the way, he should have had the two Zealots over onto the right side. I think this was actually mm -hmm. somewhat preventable. Again, the yeah. Hydras can't engage with the cannon at, at all at that distance. Only the Zerglings can. So it's really the Zerglings you have to stop from getting in there. You can see Hydra's range is about to finish here, too. Oh, man, um, he's supply blocked also during this. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but I think yeah. really, the story is really about the cannons. I mean, the units are sort of there to kind of buy of time. But, um, I mean, that's going to be it, dude, uh, for that game. Mm -hmm. Not much else to say other than that is one of the strongest rushes in the game. And, um, you know, it does make me think a little bit about... Oh, <笑>あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。
공공에 들어갈 말은 무엇일까요? 고성. 아, 서청. <웃음> 아, 이런, 이게 있어 이런 말이 있어요? 뭐라 처음, 처음 들어보는데 이런 말은? 예, 연고성이 땅 사는 죄가 아플 것 같은데. 자, 예, 리, 성, 성. 히트 난이도 5. 뭐뭐 보고 놀란 것은 뭐뭐 보고 놀란다? 바라보고 놀란 것은. 아, 아, 잠깐만. 아, 뭐지? 아, 맞아. 아, 아, 나 기억이 안 나. 소뚜껑은. 아, 이거 언제? 3, 1, 2, 3. 아, 나 호흡 몇 세스인가요? 재본 적이 없어요. 와, 나 이거 누구죠? 작은 것보다 큰게 낫다고 생각합니다, 저는. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 스타크래프트 리마스터가 출시된 연도는 2016년입니다. 네, 바꿀 거예요. 2017년도. 아, 근데 난이도가 이거 진짜 어려워요. 한, 1, 2, 3. 화살기인 다섯 번 성공한. 나라. 비전. 왜? 아, 잠깐만. 스테, 이크. 콜라. 렐라. 아, 감사합니다. 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. QNA. 이거 좋은 질문인 것. 시즌 14 우승하신다면 우승 선점 어디 사용하실 건가요? 일단 좀 빚이 있어가지고, 있었는데, 적절하게 사용하고, 제 꿈이 그 좋아하는 분들 만나가지고 이제 팬미팅 한번 여는 거거든요. 여는 거에 돈을 쓰고 싶더라고요. 1. 모감을 이용해 종이컵 속 파식스에 만 맞춰보기. 어, 진하다, 문진아. 파워 같습니다. <웃음> 어, 지, 찍었는데 맞추네. 3. 정말 <웃음> 이제 모든 걸 보여드려가지고 올라가고 싶고요. 사랑까지는. 결승까지 가서 많은 분들과 함께 하면서 웃음 즐길 수 있도록 노력해보겠습니다. 많이 응원해주세요. 네, 안녕하세요. 김민철입니다. 일단 3 나왔거든요. 김현준. 종이컵에 담겨있는 하식스 막 맞추기. 사실 이거 마셔본 게 파워 이거밖에 안 마셔봤거든요. 제로는 왠지 느낌이 어떤 맛일지 느낌 오고. 아, 냄새가 느낌이 왔어요. 이거 포스. 아니, 왜냐면은, 아니, 느낌이, 이 핀색 느낌 났어요. 핀색 느낌. 뭔지 아시죠? 어, 이 나왔습니다. 내 인생에 김명훈이 없었다면 이미 ASL 우승했다. Yes or no. 아, 사실, 이거는 노가 맞죠? 명훈이 형한테 뭐 ASL 떨어진 게한번 떨어졌나요? 오히려 오늘 같은 경우에는 이제 고마운 존재죠, 사실. 밟고 올라갔으니까. 아프리카에 있는 그 11배인가 막 그렇게 보이더라, 보이더라고요. 아, 깜짝 놀랐어요. 제가 이 정도, 내가 이 정도인가? 아, 나 진짜 보여주고 싶다. 이 생각이 좀 강했어요, 이번에. 아까 인터뷰 때 말을 못 했는데, 듀얼이랑 성대랑 연습을 했거든요. 고맙다고 여기서라도 네. 나가게 좀 해주세요. 아, 여기 조금. 팔? 앞으로 두 칸? 네. 아, 좀 일찍 끝나겠는데요? 내가 받았던 선물 중에서 가장 기억에 남는 건? 저는 솔직히 생일 선물을 받았을 때 제일 기억에 남았던 건그 공간? 제 생일은 이제 12월 10일. 아프리카에서 아주 좋은 생일이죠. 다 나왔습니다. 4자 게임 세번 성공하기가 뭐죠? 2. 아, 아, 그러니까 두 글자, 두 글자, 네 글자. 아, 예, 한번 웃길라고. 2. 아, 잠깐만. 아니, 그게 아니라. 아니, 제가, 아니, 제가, 그게, 코카가 뭐가 있죠, 근데? 콜라. 아, 콜라. 여섯 개 나왔어. 풀 응? 미션이네요. 캥거루는 어두, 어느 나라를 대표하는 동물일까요? 호주 아닌가? 아니, 근데 너무 이거 무시하신다. 이거, 우리, 뭐, 아, 이거는 저희 너무 무시하시는 거 아니에요? 보성. 너무 넘어가시고요. 아, 제가 이제 ASL에서 자꾸 8강 문턱에서 떨어졌는데 이번에는 좀 기대도 되지 않을까라는 생각을 좀 해봅니다. 파이팅! Welcome back, everybody. Um, 
we just saw Bisu fall to probably the strongest rush in the game overall, or at least one of them. But probably the it strongest. Brings, it, it brings me back to the Soma Bisu series, which at least for me, I don't know about you guys watching, but for me that was one of the most unforgettable series. Mm. Uh, and Soma basically took Bisu out in like very short, very explosive games that looked like that. Obviously a little bit more dramatic than that one. That was a, a pretty much a bopping. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it does seem like the, the very best Zergs in the world do not want to play standard. They want to end the game. They want to go for that Achilles heel. They want to find that weak point and, and go in and, and exploit it. And that's what Sulky did. But again, we've got a lot more games ahead of us. How's he going to approach it as we go to Vermeer? Right, in the top left, we have Bisu. And in the bottom right, Sulky. So, I mean, you know, it's very possible Sulky would do something like that again. Um, you know, it, it, again, it does seem like there's not really Zergs that are able to hang with Bisu if he's able to kind of tech up and start to harass and, and push out and, you know, whether it's Corsair speed zealots or something else. He's just he's good at what he's he's doing, um, and so yeah. I mean, let's see what exactly is going to go down. I well, I'm I'm hoping for better than that. When I mentioned to you on the commercial break, I was like, oh man, that's not, like I I really am looking forward to this match uh, again, even though I'm a Terran player uh, because of just the caliber of them. But when it's like cancel your tech, catch the probe, and then just kill him right before he can get any intel. It's like, ah, oh, damn, that's... I've seen this plenty of times at all levels. I, You know, this is not the game I'm looking for out of these two. Now, uh, let's see if it's going to be Forge or Gate. It looks like it should be Gate because he didn't scout mm. already with the probe. So it's going to be a gateway expand here. This is, like, basically one of the two traditional openings. Um... You know, for the matchup. I know this is one that we were kind of boggled by when we came back to casting StarCraft 1. Because when StarCraft 2 came out, guys, we, like, did a clean cut from StarCraft 1 mm. uh, to try to focus on our careers. And so when we came back uh, and, you know, StarCraft 1 was having this big revival, I remember looking at this build and just being like, what? Yeah. Nobody does this. I don't understand this. It's so different. But I, I remember you talking to me daily about your adventures trying to learn how to do this and like where yeah. to click the zealots to and like what to do against circlings. And every day you had a little bit more information and a lot more losses. Yeah, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a, some pretty advanced stuff. I think, you know, in the past, and I think it's always important to talk about the old parts of StarCraft because it then explains how we got to where we are now. Um, but, you know, it, it's this moment where in the past it was either okay you're going to forge expand or you're going to two gate right and then there's like some uh gateway gas openings in your main and there those are kind of weird but the idea of just getting one gate didn't make sense because you couldn't really fight the zerglings right uh mm -hmm. if they made enough zerglings they would kill your zealot and then they'd kill your gateway your pylon and then they you lose the game but the idea is you're able to chuck out these zealots and force them to defend and then behind that you barely are able to hold off any kind of all in yeah, definitely the type of build that takes a long time to kind of get it to the point it's at now. But at this point, it's like there's some serious perfection going on, especially when Bisu does it. Like, oh, here, yeah, I mean, we're about we're about to watch it. I'm like, let's just be quiet, Tasteless, and enjoy this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, let's just have some to... classical music play while we see where this zealot goes. Uh, yeah. You know, the thing is, is that it, it's it's about trying to divert attention, right? Like some games, you'll see Bisu will hide the first zealot. Other games, they'll send it, you know, towards the natural. Others towards the third. Sometimes the second zealot will merge with the first. Other times the second zealot will then run into the main. And so it, it really forces the Zerg to be very careful, very on their toes. Uh, it can backfire, but I, I think Dude, this was going to show us how to make it work. He's going to have to cancel that hatchery. There's only four lings here. Like, Bisu can... Like, I, I think he has a decent shot. Like, doesn't he? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I I feel like the answer is no, because that almost doesn't make sense for my brain that you'd be able to do this. But, yeah. you know, he, he's microing oh. this very well. 
And well, the right there, I think, he made, I think he made a little mistake right there on the micro, but the third Zealot comes in now. And there's not really that many more Lings. A couple more Lings coming up. The Pro blocking the very hurt Zealot. Dude, this is this is a little bit rough for Sulky, man. Yeah, well, and the thing is, is that even though, you know, you, you watch this and you think, okay, Protoss lost the fight, it, it, what it, it really comes down to, and this is why I think I think it's one of the harder concepts for people to wrap their head around, is is how the exchange went. The Protoss traded very favorably, and look at that—he barely hit that Zealot out of sight. Ooh. Oh my god! Okay, but remember how I talked about things can backfire, Artosis? Yes. Remember how I said that, like you know, this is very strong, but you need to be able to barely hold off a counterattack. Mm -hmm. Well, that counterattack's coming. That cannon's halfway done. Oh, you know what? I didn't see the Zealot above the gateway. Yeah, no, he's I think, gonna, I think he's, he's going to be all right. Him. And, and he now has that ace up his sleeve with the, the Zealot hiding. Dude, he needs to send that Zealot in and kill the Hatcher. I would love that. Uh, but look, he's actually getting very close to killing the gateway now. The gateway is starting to get destroyed. The probes come oh. up and actually do a full surround to try to stop Lings from coming in. So he loses the gateway. Now, did he make the cybernetic stays alive. That's the question. Oh, he had to have. Yeah, I see it in the top left of oh, the main. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I see it on the mini-map here, too. Because if you don't get the core out, you also just basically lose the game because you have no tech. Um, so he's okay, but that was a pretty nice snipe there. He's going to send this Zealot in. Uh, you were talking about the hatchery earlier, Artosis, mm -hmm. but I think what's even more important is just the trades. Can you get yeah. any drones? Can you kill off a couple of lings? You can see he's kind of taking these, these angles. Oh! Barely keeps that drone alive. Yeah, now the layer finishes up. Doesn't end up getting that. And I don't, I mean, as much as I want to see him make a scout and fly it over to kill that hatchery, I don't think that's going to be happening, unfortunately. Spire gets started from Sulky, and this game looks like it can go into a macro game. I mean, Sulky has made a fair amount of links. It feels like Bisu is at an advantage right now, but good Zerks like Sulky, even when they make that many early units, oftentimes, like, surprise me with how well they can drone up afterwards. Yeah. They're very good at recovering and getting back on their feet here. Um, so we've got that fourth hatch coming. We've got the Spire on the way here. Classic Bisu move, by the way, the second gateway on the low ground. Who was one of the first people, I think actually the first to start to do, to, to do that. The idea for having a second gateway there. And keep in mind, it's not, it, it's not efficient in a game that requires you to do everything manually. Mm -hmm. Normally you see all the barracks is in one spot, all the gateways in one spot. Even for Zergs, they will, you'll see hatcheries in, in clumps together because it's just easier to get stuff done there. It's mm -hmm. to prevent uh, a Mutalisk all-in from killing the Templars that would become the Archon. That's the yes. whole idea behind that. Yeah. Is that, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll have two gateways and you'll basically be getting ready uh, for the Mutas. And the thing that kind of solves the Mutalisk issue and allows you to be on the map, it's not just the Corsairs, it's an Archon as well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of good players will just snipe the Templars before they merge and then kind of win the game from there. And so that whole second gateway, which puts a bigger burden on the Protoss throughout the whole game to produce out of, it's all for that one uh, technique to not work. Yeah, that's right. And just to clear this up for people that might be confused about that, having the gateways at the natural, if a Mutalist Skull comes, it hits the main. Uh, yes, so yes. the natural having two gateways, like if you only have one, you have to build two High Templars in a row and try to make them. Whereas here, you just you pop them both out, you get an Archon, you can save your main base. So yeah, uh, we've definitely seen people lose games when they don't do this. So it's definitely a, a smart way to go about it. Yeah, you'll see some Protoss players not do it just to make it a little bit less burdensome when yeah. you go into a, the, the macro part of the game because, I mean, you can also lose a game by just missing a, ma a macro cycle, you know, if you're, you're gonna try to push and win. Mm -hmm. Now he's sent the, uh, the Zealots out. And this is going to come at a, at a pretty uh, interesting time. It's going to allow him to confirm, by the way, if there's going to be mutas coming or not. And, you, you know, the normal play is that the Zerg basically goes back and, 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 and turtles and puts the Hydralis behind the buildings and has sunken colonies, but at least at least forces the Zerg into a defensive position. Oh, I didn't realize you could run Ooh. under that. <laughs> yeah, me either. He puts an egg up, and now suddenly you can't. The Zots really end up getting nothing done there, so actually ends up being good Sim City there from Sulky. Uh, I've always enjoyed those types of Sim Cities where making an egg shuts the door because the larvae are always at the bottom, like if you want, right? Like that, or no, you can send them to the left, but they're always at the bottom. So, yeah, yeah kind of cool to, to see that, just shutting the door on those zealots. 
so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, back, back here, um, I mean, we, you know, we're, we're in a game right now where I would say this is very even on both sides. Um, you can see Bisu is looking for any openings. I don't think he's going to find them. I, the, the whole reason why Zerg's turtle like this is because of the kind of play that Bisu brought uh, into the table here. Uh, now, he may go for a dive here. The idea is that the uh, the Hydralisks actually will prioritize the Zealots over the Corsairs. And so what, uh, you know, the, the technique is, is you come in and you let the Corsairs hit the Overlords, try to supply block the Zerg, and then see if you can trade it out. Now, that being said, I think Zergs have gotten pretty good at holding this. And so mm -hmm. Bisu is also very good at knowing when to come in or when to not overextend. And so I'm looking at this and I'm saying Sulky is basically playing a perfect game. I don't think that Bisu is going to make much ground here. I, I would agree with you on that. But I think Bisu is certainly not playing poorly here. He's like making all the right choices. He's not sacrificing Zealots. He's running away all the time. He's multitasking on point. You know, his DT is active out there right now as well. So it feels to me like a pretty even game right now. Like, both of them are not really making errors. Uh, so this is going to be the moment that the Zerg can really be out on the map. He's going to be pushing out. And I think that Bisu's actually got an opportunity to do a mm. counterattack. This is actually pretty sneaky of him. <laughs> the Zerg's looking for a fight, but I think he's going to try to do what we were talking about earlier, but he couldn't quite pull it off. But I think Bisu needs to be very careful here. Again, he's so good at sniping these overlords. It's, it's insane to me. Um... He is going to have to back up. Ooh, I think so. The Hydras are trailing him, man. Like, they're trying to catch him. The DT waits for those incoming Hydras, but does get picked off as well. And it feels like Sulky is doing a good job of hurting these Zealots away. Yeah, he's chased those uh, Zealots out. Now, he is going to come in again for the counterattack with the Corsairs. Again, I really feel like there's nobody that can quite do this as well as Bisu, even though it can look sure. a little bit simple. Um... But the push is now inbound here. He's got the Templars. He did some, he got the supply block. This is big. This is where if you can oh, start man. to kill off units, it's hard for the Zerg to recover, mm. right? Because they're not able to get the same macro cycles out. We've seen a lot of Zergs just die uh, because of this. He's got another one. And so the supply oh. block continues to mount. This is so many Hydras of Jesus Christ, yeah. that's a lot of Hydras. <laughs> Dude, it is a lot of Hydras. And in fact, he is getting completely absorbed by those Hydras. Every single yeah. Zealot's going to die. The High Templars are going to try to run. He can get one more Storm off. We'll see if he even gets it. I'm sure he's busy oh. doing other things. So that was that was a big win for Sulky right there. And he's almost caught up in supply, which is always scary in this matchup. Yeah, for sure. Again, though, with the Corsairs, he's just getting the damage he needs to get done. He's going to get another Overlord. He's going to look for more opportunities. Um, Sulky going to continue to push forward here. If he can keep sniping Templars, it's going to be disastrous for the Protoss. Oh, yeah, he does pull those back. Can't quite take that third right now. Sulky going up for that denial. Sulky coming back down now. And I think there's enough here that Sulky has to turn around. Like, it, okay, here he goes, bringing his lurkers up now. Yeah, he's going to come forward here. And take, okay, so again, it, it's, it's, I don't mean to kind of keep talking about this over and over, but these Overlord snipes are pretty insane. This is the one thing that's, that Bisu's doing that's, I think, keeping him pretty viable. The Lurker Contain is beginning to be set up, but I think Bisu may just barely have enough to kind of topple this. Yeah, he, he seems to. Like, he's got that really big arc of Dragoons now. He's got enough Zealots to tank for them. So that is a very powerful combination. Uh, Sulky's still macroing well, but he is only on three bases. So Bisu, you know, it, when Zerg is still on three, I think that you can macro kind of like this as Bisu is and really take these fights if you're microing correctly, and that's what we see. Yeah, he's got eight gateways to produce here. I honestly think Bisu's in a pretty healthy spot. It's kind of yeah. remarkable. By the way, forcing those uh, would-be lurkers to cancel back into Hydralisks, that's pretty big. At this point in time, I think Sulky is going to have to abandon Lurker Contain. What Bisu's doing is he's staying active on the map, and he's willingly engaging the Zerg. And I think Sulky overestimated his position. You know, mm. you can morph lurkers back at home, by the way. You don't have to do this like... Uh, in the battlefield, so to speak. Um, but now we've got Bisu roaming. He's comfortably taking a third that can't really be counterattacked just due to sort of the, the shape of the map. And uh, something I have to point out, Tasis, because yeah. we're not showing it, he just supply blocks Sulky again. Those, those Corsairs are still, while we're watching these crazy fights with all this micro, he is still chasing down overlords all around the map. 
It's pretty remarkable, man. We saw uh, Sulky try to get in for a counter, but this is why you got to be careful in this position on this map to do this, is you can end up getting your army trapped in there. But I got to say, tactically, Sulky is pretty brilliant. He comes in here anyways. Getting a deny on this third is big, but let's also go big picture here. Zerg does not have a fourth. Zerg is basically in, in a fighting position here. Uh, and so the last thing Zerg can have happen is a third base finish and cannon surround it and, and yeah. basically cement uh, that spot. Yeah, um, especially since that is a gas base, as all bases are on Vermeer. So that's, yeah. I mean, the amount of size storm that's going to be coming out at that point would be just fearsome. Now, a great catch there up against those pillars. Bisu picking off more and more units. Dude, he's up a lot of supply. Looking good. Uh, coming forward now. I mean, this is, uh, I got to say, I feel like Bisu's just continuously barely winning these fights to the mm -hmm. point where I, I'm getting a little bit worried here for Sulky. I feel like Sulky's going to burn out yeah. uh, if this keeps up because, you know, nothing says that you have to try to play like the way Sulky is. You could also make tons of lurkers and take that bottom base for your fourth. Um, but Sulky seems to be pretty do or die here. And he is continuing to morph lurkers. Uh, this observer is even pointing out here that there's, uh, you know, no hive tech coming. He's remaining on lair. He's sort of hard locked himself into this position. Um, and it's going to come down to a fight. And again, you know, uh, it's a little bit different from the TVZ matchup where both armies are so brittle but do so much damage. It's kind of the opposite where both these armies are pretty, um, pretty thick and heavy and, and can absorb quite a bit of damage. But again, it can go either way. Indeed it can. Now, Sulky running up. He does have a pretty darn good arc. He burrows a few of these lurkers here. The Zot's coming in for a little bit of a flank. High Templar is coming down, but actually getting sniped by Sulky. Bisu not controlling that aspect of the battle all that well, but he's still going to push it back once again. Kind of a funny-looking engagement back there. You know, it was like Zerg was sort of spread very far out. Um, and again, you know, Bisu, despite losing, uh, oh, it looks like these Corsairs are going to finally get killed <laughs> off. Finally. Finally, man. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, the more this game goes on, the more I just sort of want to hand this one over to Bisu. Again, Zerk just doesn't have another base. The third base is here, and let me tell you something. The real death sentence for the Zerg is going to be if a fourth starts up and finishes. <laughs> well, you can't be down bases as Zerg here. That is just not yeah, going to yeah. end up working. Uh, and, and I, I don't want to try to be too clairvoyant with like how the game's going to go, but it does seem like this is probably going to be a couple more fights that Protoss just wins by mm -hmm. a decent margin, and then the Zerg leaves because you know anybody who's seen how PBZ go games go, where you get to like 20 minutes, it, you know, the Zerg has to have one of the either the top right area, the bottom left area, maybe a heavily lurker turtled position with Hive coming. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically, Bisu, you know, it started out with him being the active player and engaging, but since since that went down, he's been on the receiving end and basically deflecting every blow that's been dealt to him. You can even see, the, you know, the beginnings uh, of the fourth base even start over here. Yeah, and the fact that, you know, he's going to trap all these Hydras. It's like, yeah, okay, he doesn't get to start the fourth yet, but this is still pretty valuable for Bisu. But Sulky going to try to counterattack while a big chunk of the army is over here killing off his Hydras. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's getting worse and worse for the Zerg here, to be honest. I mean, we're starting to see fights where it's just Zealots coming in and, and you know, being able to handle the Hydras and, uh, you know, Bisu's supply. Be, be, keep in mind, guys, supply, whenever Zerg is involved in StarCraft 1, supply can be very deceptive. Zerg can be down quite a bit and still viable, but I think in this game specifically, it's, it's pretty self-evident that Protoss is just continuously getting further and further ahead here. Yeah, it, well, look at that supply. <laughs> it's, you know, you're up 50% as Bisu, and you have this many High Templars. It's not garbage supply, you know? It's not just, like, Zealot High Templar or something like that. There's a lot of Dragoons in there. Uh, very balanced composition here from Bisu. Plenty of Observers. Not really having too many issues anywhere. Uh, but let's see if he actually ends up taking that fourth base as well. I was, I was kind of wondering if he would send another probe down to take it after he lost the initial one. I mean, I think the thing is we got to just look at this from the Zerg's perspective from here on out because everything that Protoss is doing, it's like everything he needed to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. He's ticked all the boxes. Um, and this game is going to end potentially without Bisu ever having to kill a base, by the way. 
because it's just it's sulky endlessly oh. throwing stuff at him. It, it is kind of crazy how much you can produce off of three bases as a Zerg. Mm -hmm. So he's going to try to make Lurker's Burrow here and then try to engage the third. Um, but, I mean, you look at this, right? There's three Templars here defending that base. Mm -hmm. There's four or five Templars here with the main army. One thing I do want to point out just real quick, Tasteless, is mm -hmm. that Zerg and Protoss mine at different rates. Bisu is actually mining off one base, even though we call this three base. So right. his actual income is one base income plus a bit of gas. Solky's actual income is three base income. Because, That's you know, Zerg, Zerg is a bit different. You, you just drone less in your bases than a Protoss will make his probes. But I feel like that... That is the one window of opportunity for Sulky. You notice how hard he's been trying to deny the fourth base, because like you said, if Bisu gets a fourth, the game is over. But with just the third up, there is a chance Sulky can grind him down here. Uh, you, you are correct. That is the one, I think, way, the one scenario you could you could win this as Zerg. And I think that's really where Sulky's put all his chips in here, is to try to, to just kill that base and then maybe get a closer off of that. But again, you know, th this is not a game where the Zerg is developing. And, and you know, look, Visu is, he's, he sees the, the, the threat that you talked about. He's got three Templars there, uh, and he's very quietly taking that fourth base. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the one thing he needs to do. If he secures that, it, you don't need to always go across the map and kill your opponent. Sometimes you kill your opponent by getting another base. And that is exactly what Visu is aiming towards right now. Uh, Solki, knowing that he has to attack into this area, he's got... Good splits of units. I love the little set of lurkers he has on the right side, so he's kind of semi-threatening killing the third, but then also trying to go in and cancel that fourth off once again. Yeah, you know, normally in an ideal Protoss game, you would have taken two bases, like one shortly after the other, and then you swap your, your main and your natural over to there and kind of maintain growth, but this has been such a tense game. Sulky's coming in here for a fight. I think he is going to get a deny on that fourth. He's kind of zoned out the Protoss. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. I guess mm. Protoss is probably just going to kind of muscle their way through here. Yeah, there's been just so many great side storms. All the lurkers end up popping, and he just continues to push Sulky back. I think that was the last attack Sulky could put up that had any value to it, honestly. I think we're going to see a GG in a second. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, almost to the end here. Kind of funny to see Sulky play it out like this. It, it is sort of a depressing way to watch the Zerg lose, right? It's epic if they win through this, because they kind of, it, it's it's such a, a tightrope walk <laughs> to kind of, uh, you know, navigate the game to an end. But you can see Bisu is just more robust. Bisu did come in here with what I guess we could call more proper play. The mineral patches are going to mine out here. The fourth base is being taken here, but... You know, I don't see any opportunities for that inevitable Protoss push to fail. Mm -hmm. GG. GG. Uh, that is going to be it. That was a good game. I liked that one a lot, actually. Uh, it felt like they both did play very, very well. Sulky decided that he wanted to be more of the aggressor, really sitting on that layer tech on three base forever. Uh, but Bisu's multitasking, his, it, it just his battle control, the way he was roaming the map, you could see why he is the best PvZ player of all time. Yeah, yeah. And again, it, it also even goes back into game one. Why did the the, pro, the Zerg player rush? Because he does not want to play that game. Bisu <laughs> is, is able to play so stable. He's always able to stay on his feet. It's very hard to get him staggered or hiccuped or thrown off. Uh, and so, you know, a player like Sulky, he opted to try to exploit um, you know, some, some imbalances in, in the way the game develops in the matchup to win that. But, you know, you can't do that every game, right? And so in this game, he tried to go hard into mid game, shut down the third, and Bisu, you know, playing a more standard variation of the game, just kind of powered through, defended beautifully. Um, and I guess we're going to get a quick shot. I don't know. It's funny that, you know, because mm. we, we do replays for Round of Eight, I, I don't think there was any one moment that was really the key part yeah. of this game, but this is where they kind of drawn it together. And I guess this makes sense. You know, if the Lurkers had gotten up here and gotten a contain, or the Zerg had maybe been able to snipe the Observers, see that one yeah. Observer that's moving away? If the yeah. Zerg kills yeah. that, then the Protoss has to retreat, then the contain comes up, and then the Sulkies, you know, brought the game to where he needs it to go. Yeah, honestly, that entire clip I was watching the two observers and the way that he pulled them from side to side and moved them back and forth I think was really phenomenal like he really is the complete Protoss
Yeah, I mean, he, he is just, he gets it, man. He's the guy that, that taught the whole world this matchup. Um, quick break, guys. When we come back, we're going to go to Nemesis for map three. Welcome back, everybody. We're ready to go into... Uh, no, we're not ready to go into map two or three. Excuse me. We're ready to plug the Patreon. Um, guys, for those of you watching, uh, if you love what we're doing, you want to support us and the people that are making the English broadcast uh, of the show possible, we want to encourage you. We want to push you to go to patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Uh, I know that I had a lot of people on Patreon. I was like saying, I, me I meant to support this guy, but I haven't gotten around to it. I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts and stuff like that. Um, but now I'm doing the same thing for the stuff that I love. If you guys love us, we want to encourage you to do that. We appreciate the support so very much. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know what? That support helps us to cast awesome games like the one we yeah. just had. That was, dude, that was a great game. I really enjoyed that, the back and forth of it. Just watching the mastery of Bisu. Yeah. It's it, it's a beautiful thing to behold. Uh, and, yeah, it, this series, it, like, the first game was kind of disappointing, but I am loving game two. After watching them both, though, you you should also be impressed with Solki, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Bisu won the more macro-esque game, but I think Solki had killer instinct in both games. It worked once. It didn't work once. What can you say? Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh it's certainly a, a way to approach it. I feel like we don't see Zerg's play like that, like in game two, very often. But it, it is one way to approach this, is to basically do like a mid-game all-in. It's not really hinged on any one moment uh, other than trying to, to deny the third and basically dry the, the Protoss up. But, you know, Bisu, you know, he basically stuck to what is the, the more... I don't know how to say this. It's, it's, it's like a better way to play. It's, it's a way where you can be safe from A all the way to Z. Uh, and he got through it. And, you know, Sulky had no options. But again, we're kind of seeing a, a lot of the ideas of the matchup with these two come to fruition here as, as Bisu seems to be stronger late game. Sulky did get that win by denying a mid game mm -hmm. and a late game from even occurring. Let's see what happens on Nemesis. Hey, top left, we have Bisu. And the top right, we have Sulky. Uh, this map is like really different, man. I'm kind of excited to see what they end up going for. I hope there's no like quick bust or rush or something, because I do feel like, you know, those those kind of uh, fringe bases, those four bases at 12, 3, 6, and 9, uh, can make for some really interesting situations where it's like, okay, you can get this base, 
and it's really hard to attack in certain circumstances, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and we're gonna see. Yeah, I, I do feel like, by the way, just from the Zerg's perspective, that um, and maybe I'm wrong. Again, this is you know some of these new maps. It's kind of hard to really figure out how the best people in the whole world are gonna view them, but uh, it does seem like there's some maybe super cheesy, tricky stuff you could do on this map because of these, like, little access points, like the little stair at the bottom of the screen back there, the little staircase up to that area, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, I don't know if Sulky's going to try to take advantage of that. And, I mean, obviously, Beastu's going to look at that and probably be very, you know, aware that that could happen. Mm -hmm. Well, this is uh, a nine pool. So, Sulky getting a little bit cheesy. Is yeah. he going nine pool speed even? Yeah, yeah, he's going nine full speed. Oh man, um, okay. But bo both both uh, openers are pretty dramatic in, in how they affect the way the Protoss can uh, engage. Now, uh, we want to point out for sure that uh, Bisu here, he's scouting counterclockwise. Now, the reason why that's important is that this means he's going to scout the last possible position, which means he'll discover mm. that there's a rush inbound as late as you possibly could. Yeah. Uh, which is sort of unlucky. Uh, I think sometimes people uh, try to brag about how StarCraft is so it's so skill. There is a little bit of, of randomness and, and luck involved. For it's sure. why so many StarCraft players were able to then switch over to poker and make tons of money. Yeah. Which is like yeah, a whole yeah, other yeah, sto no, story worth exploring. Like, but 100%, man. The incomplete information yeah. aspect of it yeah. really does make some RNG. But he actually does an end scout. So he'll actually see these coming out. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was wrong. I thought he was going to do it, but he made yeah. a, a sharp turn. So he's going to see this. Now, he has to send this cell. Okay, I was going to say, he has to send that cell back. <laughs> he needs to run down and plug up the entrance with a forge. Now, this is scary for the, uh, the, the, the Protoss, but you know what? It's also manageable if it's done correctly. So this mm -hmm. is another moment where the early game is going to be extremely important. Every little unit hitting each other. We got to watch very carefully. Now, I think the Lings are going to get there. Yep, before okay. the Zealot. This is bad, dude. Yeah, he gets down the ramp really, really quickly there. Splits the Lings off. More Lings are on the way. He hasn't even made a hatchery back at home, man. Like, Sulky is just microing right now. Yeah, yeah. He is just going to go hard onto this entrance. And, you know, the problem is, is that this barricade that's made, it's really all that Protoss has. And with Lings in the back, he can run in there and try to dive on these cannons. Oh, with speed finishing up, he insta-cancels one of the cannons there. There are three Zealots and the Probes, so, like, this is a fighting force for Bisu. He can fight against the Lings, so a lot of this does come down to just Micro. Um, he can't, he's, he's, uh, he's gonna go for the gateway here. As long as the cannon isn't finished, the Protoss is in peril here. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's going for the gateway. He's forking off these lings. The trick is you run into the main, hit probes, pull zealots back in there, run back out, hit the cannon. Uh, but keep in mind, while this is all happening, Bisu is not stopping his probe production. And so there's very few drones here, but again, the cannon canceled once more. This is, again, so scary right now for Bisu. My god, it really looks like he is on the edge of death right now. That gateway, very, very low. More probes coming up. Oh, a ton of free hits. Oh, the Zot got stuck there. The other one goes outside the wall and gets surrounded. That one's going to fall as well. The next one gets surrounded. Wow, Sulky just jumping upon everything. Now starting to take out the probes. Oh my god, Tasteless. Is this over? Um, yeah, I think so, man. I mean, the gateway is going to fall here, and there's no Zealots in the game. That's it. Wow, dude. Bisu, was... man, it does seem like if you're going to be a Zerg, this is where you want to get him. Get him before it even starts. Kill yeah. it in its crib, Artosis. Yeah, yeah, that's seriously exactly what's going on right now. Uh, I mean, well done from Solki. Bisu scouted it quickly enough that I thought he was going to be able to hold, but like he didn't block the ramp. He never could get a cannon up, which, as you mentioned, that is so key in holding. You know, it's so funny, man. Um, I was going to say earlier, like, it seems to me like if you get nine pulled, the second zealot just never comes out in time. But I, I held back because at least that's what happens with me. But I'm bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I saw him and I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess you can just get in there because Bisu's obviously going to do that, build the perfection. So mm -hmm. Sulky once again with a rug pulling strategy just takes Bisu out before he can even bring the game to where it needs to be. Very well done. Uh, I know that his wins so far are rush wins, but man, this is a tournament. Like you do whatever it takes to be able to take down your opponent. Uh, and yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know, they, 
This was a smart tactic, I think, to send sumlings down because you could either harass probes or come up and hit that cannon. Yeah, and, and again, you know, when the cannon finishes, th that's the first step. The second one is to seal off the entrance, which happens, you know, moments after the cannon's done. But, you know, the nine pool, it's one of the oldest uh, strategies. I, I, in this case, um, you know, it did come down to who controlled better. And, you know, Solky, you know, he mm. did take that uh, advantage. I, I want to yeah. point out, by the way, forge openings um, a little bit more robust against this. Yeah. A little bit more straightforward. But, you know, the nine pools went away for a couple of years for the most part because everybody forged expanded. But then, you know, when gateway play came back into into the meta, uh, well, there comes the nine pool back in. So Solky up two to one, another commercial break, guys. And then we're going to go to game four here with Bisu versus Sulky. We're back, everybody, and hopefully we have a game that is going to be longer than our commercial break coming up next, man. <laughs> right now, Solky, you know, it, he seems to be on to something. And, you know, I talked about that Bisu Soma series that, you know, has always yeah. stood out to me um, among so many of the games that I have casted. That one easily registers with me and, and sticks with me because we really saw that Soma committed to aggression and, and really exploited some of the weaknesses Protoss have in the matchup early on. And um, you know, the, the end result of that is is that uh, we're seeing that the same thing happen again here with Sulky, a different Zerg, but a, a kind of on to the same path here where he says, make the game short, get aggressive, and, and kill him before he gets out of control and you cannot stop him. Well, it's it's working out for him, I guess. <laughs> uh, can Bisu have an opener tasteless that you think will be like the right thing to do here on Sylphid? Because Sylphid's a, Sylphid's a little bit different as far as like the the choke goes, the, the open ground and all that. Yeah, Sylphid is uh, for sure a different map here. Um, actually, we're just going to hop into the game, guys. We'll talk more about that in a second. This is game four right now. Sulky up with a two to one lead versus Bisu. All right, so Bisu on that right-hand side, and then we're Sulky over here on the left-hand side. Headband on the chair. <laughs> now, um, you know, going into this game, I, I don't know that this map changes a lot of just the, the ways the Protoss wants to play. I think it was Rain. I could be wrong, man. Sometimes I get these games mixed up in my head. I think it was Rain did a center gate on this map. But other than oh, that, okay. I mean, ev everybody basically just, you know, does the fast expand build. You know, some maps, they totally change matchups, but I feel like PvZ on this map, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It is a three-player map, which makes it a little bit easier for the in the late game for the Protoss to just make sure that the Zerg doesn't take that top location. But, mm -hmm. you know, PvZ is so much more than that. Uh, this is going to be a gate expand again, by the way, since the probe has not scouted yet. Sulky's going to nine pool again, man. Yeah, dude, I get it. I don't like it, Artosis, but I get it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I that's a good way to put it. I feel my heart rate going up a little bit here as a Protoss player where I'm like, unbelievable. 
Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> I know I know that I'll, feeling. I'll say cases. that with a straight face and then I'll just steal the Terran's gas in my next ladder game. But yes. <laughs> yeah, but right now I'm looking at this and I'm going, man, you bad person. So mm -hmm. he's gonna do the nine full speedling rush. Man, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, uh, maybe it is broken if he wins two games in a row against Bisu with it. <laughs> <laughs> then it's Blizzard fix it, please. Yeah, which they, of course, will not. This they game won't. hasn't been patched since, what, yes. 1999 or so. So That is the beauty of it, though. This game yeah. is just frozen in this way, even though you know we keep learning about it and it keeps developing. Um, and once again, it's going to be a slightly later scout. You know, the, the, the most ideal thing that can happen if the Zerg 9 pulls, from the Protoss' perspective, the most ideal thing that can happen is you find it first. Because mm -hmm. then you start, you know, doing whatever you need to do to try to block it. Now he, links, he'll find it before the lings get out, right? Like the probe will meet those lings as they're coming out uh, of the main yeah. base. He'll, he'll, yeah, he'll, he'll meet the lings. The lings will basically hatch. It's also kind of funny when you see the drone come here to expand. It's not, at least for me and for other people I talked to, it's not always clear. Yeah, see, he didn't think it was a, mm. a, a nine pillar. He wouldn't have made the pylon. Yeah. Now he's running back, and right now Bisu knows that. In the next few minutes, everything is going to come down to how he controls this. And I got to say, dude, I feel like the forge is a little bit late. He it did is. let the pylon continue to make over here, which really shows you know where Ooh. the Zerg's priorities are. Yeah. He's got one zealot. He cancels it. He goes in for a block. Man, Bisu's really good at multitasking here. Second oh, no, he's, zealot's he's out, <laughs> but the lings break through. Okay, so but look at this. He tastes this. He's split the Zealots now. He's trying to block Lings from going into his main base, which I think is really super key in holding this. Another pylon gets started. That actually can do some blocking for the pylon as well if he makes the cannon in that little nook. I think that Bisu is dealing with it much better this time so far. Where is he going to make the cannon? I think right next to that pylon. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Zealot gets pushed way back, does get surrounded. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I think Bisu could lose now. He's so far out. Okay, two lings go into the main base. Why doesn't he start a cannon? Okay, he goes for a cannon in the main, and now a cannon in the natural. And look at this. Those two pylons, like this placement is much, much better. It's a lot harder to get around that with lings. By the way, I've never seen the cannon made first in the main. That really is a very interesting yeah. idea. The third zealot gets out. The, the lings dive on the cannon, insta-cancel to save a little bit of money. He needs to restart it, but he doesn't have minerals just yet. Oh, my God. Oh, He's actually going to kill every zergling off. What? That's crazy. Like, he is holding this. So, like, Tasteless, last game he got butchered. Here he's making it look like you should never have done this against him. Yeah, he just needs to get that cannon up. There's one Zealot. Now, the gateway was never killed, so Zealots keep popping out. We saw that other one come out there. He needs to plug. He needs mm -hmm. to get this out. The, the, what the Lings want to do is they want to try to hit that gateway on the outside, draw you out, and then run around you. Solky is continuing to make lings. Every time you see a pair of lings hatch, it's, it's him telling us that he's still committed to this attack. Mm -hmm. He's actually gone up to three hatcheries during all this as well. Uh, you know, that cannon in the main base, definitely some peace of mind, I think, that you don't care if they try to run lings through. And now the cannon finishes here. Dude, how far ahead is Bisu right now? 31 supply gets 15. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> and it's funny, He's the over Nexus twice just, his supply, Tasteless. The Nexus that's just crazy. now starts. Um, Man. All right, so the Zealots are coming out. Look at that hiding spot. Camouflage. You're only going to see that on the minimap, honestly. Yeah, yeah, good hiding spot there. I didn't know you could... It's funny, you know, if you really look at these maps, there's great locations to, like, put things under trees or behind, mm -hmm. like, certain rocks and... They're basically invisible to the naked eye unless you see the blip on the minimap. Ling's uh, spreading out right now, trying to find if there's anything out there. Bisu looking so, just rock solid right now. Yeah, look, looking extremely good here. <gasps> yeah, he just can't see that. Dude, that so, that that probe has his camo shorts on right now. Those Ling's I are know, not going to be able to find he's, it. He's got his ghillie suit on or whatever. <laughs> like. yeah. Now... Um, the Lings are going to go back a little bit here. And uh, look, when you're Protoss, if you didn't lose that many probes during this rush, you're pretty comfortable. So he just peeks, he sees the creep, he's going to send the probe to hide somewhere else. Because right now he's trying to figure out what development is looking like. And by the way, this does seem to be the, the current trend, at least in the tournaments that uh, you know I'm casting, where after the nine pool, they just go straight into all drones and hatchery. Don't get a quick layer and look at this beautiful scout. 
Yeah, Bisu, yeah. Bisu has what he needs. He's going to see there's one drone in gas. He knows it's going to be a power play. He sees the second drone get sent up there. So there's no mysteries uh, uh, as far as Bisu's concerned about what Sulky's up to. And now a lot of Zots are walking across the map. The Lings are coming back to deal with that probe, but they're going to have to deal with these Zots coming in as well. He's going to have to make quite a few more Lings, which is going to hurt that droning that he's trying to do. So... Oh, I um, like that turnaround a lot, Tasteless. You yeah, walk out enough so that good. he knows you're on the way, and now you have to make all these Zerglings. Now he can just walk home, and again, invincible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bisu is truly the master. Well, it's 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 crazy because like it, that's harder to do than you'd think, right? Like to, to to send it out and then run back because you know if you're playing the game, it might feel like you didn't do anything. But when you see how dramatic it is for the Zerg side, where they have to be ready, they make all these units and then you just run back and, and kind of you bluffed them. Um, mm -hmm. It's an excellent move here. I'm sorry, is there no layer or am I not seeing the layer? No layer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Looks like it's five hatch hatchery tech hydra. Six hatch artosis. I think there's two. Oh, hatches six up. now. Is there two up at the uh, two or three up at the top? Either I way, it, it's basically him going for a, a powering play. So he wants to try to take the uh, Protoss head on. This is a lot less about turtling and a lot more about engagement. Misu just kind of sitting in front. His uh, Corsair going around, going to clean up a few overlords, get a little bit more scouting intel as well. Looks like Evolution Chamber is that other blip right there. So. Uh, definitely going to be going into heavy hydras here as Solki. But doesn't he just need Bisu to uh, make a, a reasonably large mistake with his army to really have a chance um, to win this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, an overextension, of course, would be very welcome from the Zerg side of things. Um, Bisu's being very cautious, though. See that second cannon? That's to make mm. sure that, you know, Lings can't do a counterattack if he tries to run out. Um, but yeah, I mean, Bisu's going to be on the map. But basically, guys, when we saw those cheeses earlier, including this one, it's to stop Bisu from getting to this point in the game. Yeah. Zealots with speed and plus one uh, attack or armor are going to be out on the map. You know, he's going to be looking for fights, and he's going to continue to very steadily develop, increase probe count, get psionic storm, uh, get a robo, get dragoon range, eventually take a third, and, and just become a menace to the Zerg on the map. Mm. There are a lot of Zealots out on the map right now. He's been on 4 gate for a while. He goes up to this third base. Only four Hydras sitting there. He's actually going to kill the Den to get in? What? <laughs> that can't possibly work, can it? We'll see it from time to time where they'll, well, the, the Protoss will target like the Den or the Evo Chamber to try. Because if you crack the position open, then the Zerg really loses their footing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, this is kind of a crazy commitment here. It seems like Sulky is slowly winning the fight. I, I'm almost in disbelief by seeing the Zealots continue to, this, to trickle in yeah. here. Yeah, Th this actually is like exactly what I was trying to get at, where I'm like, doesn't Sulky need Bisu to really make a pretty big mistake? Yep. And you said, yeah, well, Zerg would like him to throw his units. I can't think of any better way to throw all of your units than exactly what we just saw. Like, he lost so many Zealots there and got very little done. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of surprised to see Bisu do that. Also, he didn't have the Corsairs with the army, which I'm, I'm kind of more used to doing. He's got to mm -hmm. be careful. Now, Bisu has a pretty good trap set up here uh, where, you know, the Zerg might get a little bit uh, power hungry and try to come in there and take the cannons out and then get flanked by the, the Zealots. But, you know, development continues over here for Bisu. And again, that's the thing that's scary about him is he's assertive on the map, but also he never really misses production. Um... And so, you know, we still see Sulky kind of sitting back here. It looks like we might get some uh, some closure here on this Hydroless <laughs> den. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, he will be know, able to pick it up. I don't know if the Lurker upgrade is going on in there right now. So that's an important thing to remember. You know, if, if this game is going to be anything like game two, Lurkers were, you know, very pivotal. And so he just killed that den off. And again, I, I could be wrong. He might have it finished. I don't really know the timings for Zerg exactly on that. But... Dude, this Hydralis, man. Yeah, that was, like, that that was, was like a Dota unit body blocking. What? Pause. Like, I DS? wonder what that is all about. Oh, my God. We don't almost what? ever get a pause there. Something really wrong happened here, guys, just to put yeah. this out there. You have to type PP or PPP or whatever it is he to pause DS. within a game. And so Bisu straight up paused the game himself there.
So something I, something went wrong. Like his keyboard may have started not wor- working or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused. So usually the the word I think it's PP or PPP. I can't remember, but yeah. that was the the tournament rule for for I'm going to pause. Yeah. Um, and you'll even see people do this on ladder now. It's kind of the etiquette. Um, but he typed DS, which do, does not look to me. I'm looking at my keyboard now. That's not like uh, oh I hit the wrong key. Oh, did he type DS? He I thought he just DS, paused. But what okay, is D, but but is but is what does DS mean? DS. There, I've never seen that before, and I feel dark like, swarm. Dark swarm. His dark swarm. <laughs> <laughs> he had a pause. He's like, I'm really worried about that dark swarm. Um. Oh, that's so weird. It's so mm. funny because you know this isn't live, right? Like we're recording this, but I was not expecting that. All right, I don't know. We'll yeah, never know, guys. Pauses. <laughs> I don't, now, see, it seems, with, seems that, like it's fine. I mean, the game goes on. The amount that the Zealots uh, glitched on that Hydra, I mean, I would pause a game for that. I'd pause and let my opponent know they're really lucky. It was, it was like really a lucky. Dota like, hero <laughs> blocking, like yeah, <laughs> somebody from running away. Um, okay. Ooh. Pretty bad storm there, but uh, he has a lot of Zealots, so I think he's going to be all right still. Okay, um... Yeah, he's good. He's good. Okay, I was going to say, like, this Templar needs to just spam out a Psy Storm here. <laughs> he's on the run here. He's got these uh, Zealots and DTs coming out here. But it seems like Sulky just has enough. And I don't want to call it too soon, but this is really starting to look like Game 2. Right? It's like Yeah, just... a little bit, yeah. By the way, the Protoss with the uh, Robo done, everything that you needed to, to kind of clean up in mid-game is there. He's mm -hmm. going to have Observers. He has Dragoon range. He needs to start that forge again. I'm a little bit worried by seeing that. Um, but Sulky seems to be locked in to mid game here. We don't have a Queen's Nest. Um, again, it's not wrong for Sulky to play like this, but it does mean that he has to try to, to you know, end this game some way because Bisu is just going to continue to grow and, and, and balloon on the map. Yeah, I think uh, we've seen like a lot of Zergs lately stay just on Hydra Lurker for a very, very, very long time. In fact, like a lot of games get decided. I think it just has to do with uh, how difficult it is while going Hive to get that fourth base maybe. But uh, now Bisu moving forward with this really strong army. Sulky, that's his only dead spot as far as vision. And that's going to just pop into his natural. He is not ready for that. Yeah, it seems like he kind of... Uh, Bisu moved into a, a blind spot here on the mini-map, and he's totally caught off guard. Now, this doesn't mean Zerg may still be able to sandwich this, but if you look on the left side of this, I mean, he's really made so much ground in here. Uh, I'm sorry, is there an Observer? I don't see it, but I might be missing it. I don't it. see it. I do not see an Observer in here right now. Dude, this is uh, crazy. But, yeah, he's kind of out of range of... The, oh, God. He, all he does is click on Hydralis Deads. He needs to stop this madness. Well, if plus one attack is done, I'm not sure if it is or not, but then when you kill the Hydralis Den, you can only make Lings, which the Zealots just dominate mm -hmm. versus. So, you know, he, he's in a, a pretty difficult position here. The Zerg really can't can't function right now. Uh, you know, the Lurkers can't get back here. That was sort of the edge the Zerg had in the fight. The Zealots are going to go for this, this spawning pool. Dude, this is insane. That means now, you, I, can only, you can only you can only make drones and overlords. You have to fight it with overlords, man. Um, oh my he God. gets that now. The den is started. The pool is not. But in this tiny window of time, hydras and zerglings can't be produced. Whereas Visu is going to go completely uninterrupted in his production, and he's coming out here. Keep in mind. Oh, you know what? He's going to go for the Evo Chamber now. And now you can't make spores! Like, it, there's nothing for Sulky to do at this point. Uh, he does come up across the bridge here. He's trying to drone with those drills, keeping the Zods off of his Hydras. Uh, and the den is done, so we can get back into that production now. Yeah, um, I mean, he just keeps going for the knees here, uh, you know, for Sulky. And again, you know, he's got a third base up. A fourth is going to be coming in here shortly. Uh, Sulky is going to try to lash back, but I'm a little bit worried that this is going to be <clears throat> a moment where he's just going to be feeding into the powerful position Beast has already got. 
Yeah, look at this. Goes forward and he actually does snipe off one of those High Templars very nicely, but the Zealot's being microed on top of the Lurker's Sulk. He drops down to about 70 supply here. Looks like he's trying to do a little bit of counterattacking, but some nice cannons already up there from Bisu, who has three bases, but only two have gas, just to throw that out there. Okay, he's coming in now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um... I mean, this is this is pretty rough, man. I think that, yeah, this is in some ways very similar to game two, although I think, you know, it's clear Sulky wasn't trying to end it outright. GG. He was trying to just play toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bisu, but again, Bisu comes out on top. Artosis! We're yes. going to have a cheese for game five. That's the way this is going down. It has to. It, it has, has to be, to. right? Well, I mean, this was a cheese, too. Don't forget, this was a speedling opener. Nine pool speedling once again. Oh, yeah. And you know Bisu what's just held it so much better. It was such a dramatic uh, mid-game. I actually kind of forgot that that was a nine pool speedling yeah. at the start. But again, you know, it, it, the story is really becoming more and more obvious here is that Bisu cannot be stopped in a long game. Sulky can try to go for, like, a cutthroat move. Um, but if you don't kill Bisu there, you won't kill him later on. Well, uh, what does Sulky plan for this next game? I'm really not sure what it what it could be at this point because that nine pool speed is just not going to work anymore. I think Bisu like he shut that down so hard this time. Uh, but he, I mean, he did make some questionable moves after that, right? Like it felt like he threw away a lot of units in there, but I guess he just had such a lead and he has so much skill. It was not an issue for him to go ahead and finish it out. Yeah. So this is that critical moment. And this game probably would have, we would still be casting it if this hadn't happened. Is basically, uh, Sulky hadn't covered his position well enough. And so this, this uh, army sliced through and passed what Sulky had to fight with. And this is really the important moment the zealots get passed uh, in here into the into the location. The the lurkers kill what they can, but then they're not hitting anything. And dragoons and zealots are, are kind of fine fighting hydras. And then and this is really something I think Bisu is especially good at. Rain maybe as well, but he knows how to basically divvy up tasks for each of the zealots mm -hmm. so that he's gonna win on multiple fronts. Like you know he has the dragoons back here to kind of draw attacks, but he also has. Some zealots hitting buildings, others hitting workers. Um, and it, it causes a lot of things to fall apart at once for Solki. And that's why he wasn't even able to survive to Hive Tech. So we're tied up two to two, and I am so happy to say we're going to be going to a game five just after the short break. Stick around. You do not want to miss the end of the series. Welcome back, everybody. It's time to settle the score. Um, I really feel like a cheese is going to be coming, right? <laughs> like, well, I, it, it I has just, a lot, yeah. I don't feel like every best of five can be predictable, but this one, I, it, it does seem like Sulky is really trying to avoid long games here. And I'll tell you what, I don't blame him. I think it's smart. I think he's, he's, he's realizing in this matchup against this guy, if he wants to go to the next level in this tournament, he needs to, to kill it in its crib. You know, he needs to stop it before it starts. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I feel like Bisu has kind of read the situation correctly now. Like, when that nine pool speed killed him on Nemesis, I was definitely a bit worried for him. But Sulky doing that twice in a row, like, I get it. That's a very Sulky thing to do. I think that's, again, part of why he's so good, but also why he loses matches sometimes where you're like, what? Uh, but the fact that Bisu smashed it in that last game after losing to it the game before 
I feel like Sulky is getting boxed in right now, Tasteless. Yeah. Um, we're ready, I guys. think bisu has got time. this. I think Maybe. Bisu has Maybe. We're going to find out, man. Map is Odyssey. One of these two players moves on to the round of four. We have Bisu in the top right. And in the bottom left, we have Sulky. If he nine pulls speeds again, Tasteless, I don't even know, man. It's too much for me at that point. I mean, I think he, he could. I mean, he, he could. Was. He could. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. like, he is that type of player that he might do that. He might decide, you know what? <laughs> this is my best chance. Let's go. And I, it's so was... funny because I think that, like, a lot of people will look at stuff like that when stuff like that happens and be like, well, I wouldn't have done that. That's stupid. And it's like, ah, well, I mean, I disagree with a lot of the choices Sulky makes, but he's really one of the best players in the world and has been for years and years. Oh, yeah. By the way, um, and I was almost holding back this criticism, but I'll just say it. Um, Misu may want to just dial back slightly only fast expanding, even though I know he's the best at it in the world. Hmm. But because it's become predictable, this is when when he does lose to Zerg, it's because of these uh, engineered attacks that are, are designed to basically destroy the Wallen at the expansion. The thing mm -hmm. is, it's, this way to play is so much, frankly, better than like proxy gating in the middle of the map or or, or going one gate gas or or doing two gate, like we've seen Mini do a couple times. But you know, part of this game is about cycling between build orders. It's about build order oscillation mm -hmm. in a series. I mean, the whole reason why you have to play uh, at least three games, but possibly four or five at this part of the tournament is that there are so many different ways to play StarCraft. We want to have a couple of interactions with the players to, to figure out, okay, who really does come out on top, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the techniques about winning an extended series is having a way to open. I mean, you'll even see this actually in, in fighting games where like, you don't always want to try to run in and throw the opponent at every game. Some games you want to, you know, crouch and, and do a, a jab or other games you want to come in and jump. Other games you want to just back up and wait for them. Mm -hmm. um, you see that in, in long form in RTS as well, is that, you know, th there's yeah. certain setups. And I think what we're really seeing here so far has uh, is on the Zerg's end is, is Solki and other Zergs before him have, have opened up to exploit the way that Bisu plays. And interestingly enough, Bisu doesn't seem to be too interested in trying to um, avoid those encounters. Instead, he wants to power through it. Now, mm. that being said, this is not a nine pull speedling rush. This is Solki when it's all on the line going for what looks to be a pretty standard opening. Yeah, yeah, just the uh, hatchery first. He looks like he's going to throw down a third hatch as well. One thing I do want to mention while you were on that uh, nice monologue, Tasteless, is uh, Bisu did try to fake a cannon rush. There's a very excellent position behind the minerals for a cannon here. Uh, so, you know, Sulky didn't know what this was, of course, till the Overlord got up there. But uh, gets a drone right off. If you get two, it's so good. And I think he's just barely Ooh. going to not get two. Hold on. Yeah. That was insane drilling. That Zealot was just moonwalking for days there. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, killing one Zergling is pretty good. If you get two, in my own experience, so many Zergs will just all in from that because they don't want to play the game out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, th this does actually generate some of the same patterns we've already seen between these two. It's mm -hmm. going to be the Protoss once more on the receiving end. Now, now, Bisu's not mini. He's not trying to cut corners every game, um, you know, and get a, and get a core out and you know, get mm -hmm. a cannon later. He's very much committed to just trying to seal this off. But let's see what Sulky can do, dude. Sulky is still making Ling's artosis. There are oh, more man. Lings coming in pairs You're up right. to the north part of the map. And as this pro passes two Lings on the bridge, he knows what's going on. He starts a shield battery right away, which I think is wow. really smart, and a cannon back there. Whoa, I really like the way he set this up. But, oh no, two of the Zods actually go a little what? bit too far out to the front. What was that? Now, that was, oh my God, he's what? bringing everything out here. Yeah, he like overextended 
so much, and now the cannon's gonna go down. I don't think he needed to do that at oh all. I, don't, I, I really don't understand what I'm looking at now. Um, yeah. And he's gonna branch the Zealots out in two different directions. We've seen this in the other games earlier. You, you uh, go between attacking probes to running down to hitting cannons. Now, are there more Lings making? It seems like drones are hatching back at home, so Sulky is going to halt uh, any more Zergling production and instead focus on development here. But look, he stopped Protoss from mining gas. That's very important. These are things we really want to be aware of as we're watching this because everything's going to be slowed down. Uh, he's continuing to hick up the probes that are mining, forcing them to defend themselves and then retreating again. What a strange, a strange scene that was when he walked away in front of the gateway. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but Sulky is going to follow this up now. Oh, with, with a Hydralis Den, and that that could be very good. We've actually seen Protosses sometimes in the past. We saw at least one game where the Protoss lost because the shield battery was in the way during a Hydra bust. You remember Dude, that? Dude, Artosis, that's such a smart observation. And like, honestly, I, that I would not even have occurred to me because I thought, well, this is just like, you know, a good plan B, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because it, from, from the Protoss's perspective, you're like, oh, you're going to make drones. Now, I, now it's my turn to try to come in here and attack you. But the, oh, can he, okay, he's going to stop him from getting behind that. Yeah, the, the presence of the battery could, oh my god. <gasps> oh. oh, man. More drones pop out, but yeah, that, that shield battery is in a little bit of an awkward spot. We'll see if that actually, if that's going to be what Sulky does. I think he is, right? Like, he must just be getting yeah, yeah, yeah. speed right now for Hydras, and he'll be, he's popping out some drones just to make sure he can keep it going. But we're definitely going to see a bunch of Hydras go across the map. Yeah, and so a couple things to note here. The way this pylon's placed, he can... Oh, no. What, what is going it on? It wasn't blocked. Oh, man. Dude. Dude. The Dragoon that was supposed to be blocking there, did that just go into the main to kill an Overlord? Is that what happened? I, I, didn't, I honestly didn't see it. Uh, but, I mean, it's clearly that was not blocked, and you have to block. Now... I, I am already feeling like Sulky can close this out. Yeah. Cannons going down. And two cannons are being made, but note the placement. They're very the, forward, oh so the Hyperlist can just Ooh. run up and, and, and hit them. And he's oh. got the right idea. He's is he going to get a cancel one. here? And now the Hydras come up to alley-oop the kill on that cannon. Oh, my God. Bisu once again walking in front of his wall. I think it's very appropriate this time. He has to push these back while cannons try to finish. He actually has... Five zealots. He might be able to get those cannons up. Um, this is insane. I, I mean, can't I mean, even. It, this it, game is, this is absolutely wild. Now the battery's, I think, still up. He might have a moment to use the cannons to kill the battery to make cannons where the battery would be. Uh, I think but he's yeah. He's just buying time. He, he is doing exactly that. He needs to get more cannons now. Three are up. Three is a pretty good number. He needs also to make another pylon because you could kill the pylon here at the right angle. Ooh, yeah. Zealot pops out to the front while he tries to target a cannon. He does get a cannon here, but loses a little bit. The Corsair going through sees that Hydras are still being created. Now, uh, rushes like this from the Zerger, not without sacrifice. He's not making drones. He doesn't have layer tech. You can see there's not that much mining. So uh, there is, a, 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 you know, a, a way to escape this... Uh, almost end game, ending rush here if you can just get enough cannons and hold this off. Now, he's going to kill the gateway, and he can get the forge next. When you get rid of the forge, it allows you to then run up in front of the cannons and kill them. But I don't see more Hydras coming, so I think he's actually stopped the rush. No, no, I'm sorry. There's more Hydras coming here. Excuse me. Oof. All right. Well, actually, they just turned around and went back to the main. I think that maybe you're going to block the Corsair or something. I'm not... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm like watching the mini map right now just for the unit movements, right? Because we're we're looking at other things on the screen, but I guess the rush is over. Seems like it. Yeah. Now, one thing I really want to mention uh, on this map, you do have that back base behind you, right? And he does have a probe down there right now, killing the cannon. But that gives a third gas to Protoss, which is oftentimes the biggest point of contention mid-game. Yep. Um, DT got to come out now. I didn't get a good look at where the Overlord distribution, but, you know, that is something we want to watch for. It, it sometimes amazes me how much players like Bisu and Rain can get, like, one DT somewhere and then just do an insane amount of damage with it, uh, mm. even though it seems like, you know, it's something that Zergs would have to deal with every, every game. 
Um, now, I, it's easy for me, at least, to forget there's a third gas on this map, but that's yeah. kind of the Zerg's <laughs> worst nightmare here. Mm -hmm. Because when you have three gases, really, it's so easy to get the Templars out. You can probably get the Templar energy upgrade. Uh, forge upgrades are not an issue. You can get the Robo out. Oh, my God. I can't even believe it. Six yeah. kills. Oh, and he's got a second one that's just killing these Hydras. Dude, Solky's kind of falling apart here. Yeah, yeah. I think that basically, you know, he's he's seeing the same thing happen, that once, like, the Templar Archives finishes, Bisu never loses the game. <laughs> um, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to stop Bisu before, you know, uh, he can get started, but it's just not working. He's going to now have six gates, and shortly after that, eight. Um... I mean, this is all very, very rough. Bisu's taking a third base basically for free. You know, we were joking about Mini. Sometimes he's, like, able to take bases. To me, it doesn't make sense because <laughs> I feel like it's not safe. But the way this map is shaped, man, it does seem like a good map for Protoss if, if they can't be stopped, right? You get a second yeah. gas and you have this free base in the back. You know, if you have uh, heavy map control as Sulky, you could kill the temples, and that base would be really hard to defend at that point, but he's kind of had to stay back a little bit on the defensive after his first two rushes failed. Yeah, well, and, and look, the truth is, like, he didn't really have much of a plan if the Hydra bust failed. Because yeah. now the Protoss is getting out of control. I mean, it's. I mean, I'm not saying that this game's over, but man, I'll tell you what, it's looking very, very dark for Sulky here. What are these now, probes doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I think that that was like a bad. Maybe. Oh, you oh, know what? He might have tried to transfer from three from the natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's how so they're just. Mm -hmm. They're lost Jinx. at sea out there. Uh, okay, so right now, like, the supplies look close, but I think that that's a bit of an illusion just because Bisu took the third so quickly. We're so used to Protoss getting seven to eight gates before a third Nexus that, like, if the Zerg supply ever catches up, I'm always like, oh, ding, 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 Zerg's winning. <laughs> but I feel like here, it's just Bisu didn't get as many gates, he didn't produce as many units because he wants that third base. Oh, and look, look at this, at he's got a Dark Archon ready for Maelstrom upon Mutas. Like, this... Dude, I would be shocked. If Solki can beat Bisu from here, he's going to win this season. <laughs> oh, dude, I mean, I, I, this is looking so grim, honestly. I don't know that the Scourge saw the Dark Archon. Scourge have, like, uh, hilariously low vision. <laughs> um, uh, so, I mean, this is like the Zerg's worst nightmare. There's nothing really scarier than a Protoss with, you know, three gases like this. Uh, four, healthy four Corsair Tech. Sorry, four gases. <laughs> Healthy Corsair tech. He's getting his upgrades, but he's also got the Dark Archon. So there's, like, basically mm -hmm. no way to try to finesse a win by sniping the, the Templars with the Mutalisks. If you, yeah. if you try to do that, they will freeze the Mutalisks and just kill them and then completely wipe you out. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that's what Sulky's going to do. Uh, the Dark Archon doesn't have much functionality past that. I mean, I guess you could, like, feed back a Defiler. I guess you could, like... Mm. Uh, Maelstrom. Uh, a I think Maelstrom is. They bur burrow. Yeah, it's always it's always good, but it's not like worth the cost if they aren't going muted. Well, basically. you know what's funny about Maelstrom is that um, the, your Protoss units will default into attacking the other units. I'm so, sorry. What what do you mean? So when when you Maelstrom like some Hydras, yeah, the Zealots and Dragoons will just attack the Hydras that aren't frozen. Oh. It, okay. changes, it changes the attack priority is what I'm oh, trying okay. to say. Oh, okay. I hadn't been aware of that. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't encounter it a lot, but that's my army just mm -hmm. walks right past it and looks for something else. So he's going to back up now. This is just be a great little Look at this. storm here. He's hiding the Dark Archon in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Every little thing Bisu does here, he's just like, yeah. I, he, I think maybe he's not sure if he knows that the Dark Archon is there or not, but why show it? But... This Zerg is basically going to go for very heavy turtle play, and, and I think we're in for a pretty mm. long game because I don't see any real location that is breachable um, for Bisu. Yeah, I mean, that's there's a good a point. point. Where you, you see enough lurkers, you're like, I don't know if I even want to try, um, although he may try, but uh, you know, breaking down lurker defense can be pretty tough. Um, if Zerg stays on this, and I imagine Zerg will, we'll probably have to see uh, Reavers teched out here. That's kind uh, of the yeah, final piece yeah. of the puzzle. And is this going to be drops? Does he have a bunch of units in Overlords ready to kill this back base? It, it, it's that either would a be drop a huge or it's a swing. Fake drop. 
It, it looks be... to me like a drop. Yeah. Why would you fake a drop here? I don't know. I mean, oh, man. Because you're a really good gamer. That's why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. so. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, one thing that, okay, actually, Artosis, I want to I wanna change yeah. teams here. Yeah, I'm no, starting I'm changing to think teams that, too. that this is going to be a very tough one for, um, you know, well, that drop, to do. I mean, to take out one of his bases right now completely for free. And yeah. look at this defense between the spread sunkens and the the lurkers are mostly spread, so the storm will only hit one at a time, which is so annoying to deal with. Yeah. Now maybe he can get enough dragoons here. The thing is, there's so many lurkers. He's basically shifting all of his defense, dude. He's still mm -hmm. gonna try to push, but again, I mean, this lurker count is absurd. It oh my really God, is. Great storms, though. He, he gets amazing storms all throughout, except maybe the very first one of those zealots. And he actually pops every single lurker, but his army is small enough that reinforcements from Sulky will kill it immediately. So I think pulling back is the super high IQ play here from Bisu. Yeah, no, this is the right move. He has to rinse and repeat here. Now, he has not used his mail uh, strum. This might be a good oh, moment. Like oh, that, oh, there oh. it is. There it is. That's the play. That you was know, good. And he has another one in his uh, pocket here. That's a 200 mana Dark Archon. There's a mm. big drop here. Dude, Bisu actually is not making the kind of progress in his attacks that Sulky is. Yeah, this drop into the main base, he might end up losing some big tech, a lot of probes, maybe the Nexus. Like, the Temple Archives is right there. The Cyber Nexus Core is right there. Those are huge kills if he gets them. Um, this is getting oh, worse oh, and worse. Oh, 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 dude. Look at the wall look he the just wall. made. Oh, my God. That's insane, man. That is the cutest stuff that, I've ever seen. That's so down and dirty. This is so annoying for Protoss. And then he just cancels it. He's like, I'm not yeah. going to actually make lurkers here. I'm trying to buy time. Yeah. Now, uh, Protoss is still on three bases. I'm not clear on what the defense is at the third. Okay. Uh, not bad, actually. I think he, yeah, I don't think he can lose this unless those Templars get sniped. Oh, uh, goes down. So, yeah, throws a decent storm down there. The dragon's kind of fighting on there, and more units coming. Uh oh, uh oh, tasteless. Bisu still has like decent supply. A lot of units coming down right now, but this is getting really sloppy, and his army quality has fallen dramatically throughout. Some pretty crazy storms there. Um, oh, the lurker oh. drop here, man. Uh, Sulky oh, no. is oh, just no. beating down. Well, Bisu is his multitasking. Like he, sh he's showing very clearly why he is the best Protoss of all time. He is jumping all over the place and doing his best to do things like run probes away and not take massive losses. But this is such a tough situation, especially having lost that back base. I think that drop for Solki really turned this game on its head for Bisu. Um, this is brutal. I mean, I, I think that we are almost to the end here, Artosis. Yeah. I mean, if, if he can't get this third base under control, I think he's just going to lose. I mean, never For underestimate sure. how strong Zerk Drop is, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get a Protoss really out of position like that and make less about their push and more about them trying to put out fires on their side of the map, that's what you need. And totally. now these probes are having to fight. They're going to be uh, massacred over here. That's it. Wow. GG. That's Bisu crazy. Bisu has fallen, and Sulky has overcome the obstacle of Bisu in a long and dramatic PvZ. Yeah, but don't forget, two rushes <laughs> once again. He went mass sling counter, uh, and then he went, like, Hydra Bust, and then he just turtled on the four bases and hit that drop. It felt to me like Bisu was in such a good, such a good spot there, but really he had no answer for the drop. Just a great game, man. Mm -hmm. um, I gotta say, uh, Sulky is a real threat for this tournament. And I'll tell you, uh, uh, Bisu could not have gotten himself into a better position. But, you know, that, that funny little back base that you get, of course, you can drop it, man. Protoss can't get their army back there. You know, you would have to commit to a lot more Corsairs and basically defend that. But, you know, Sulky, despite having a bungled early game attack, he did recover. He managed to power through, he held off the push, but more importantly, he was dropping, he was harassing, uh, and he was isolating Bisu from many opportunities in the late game. Really masterfully done from Sulky. And this was this was a very good series at the end of the day, Tastes. I know we definitely had some very cheesy games in there too, but between this game and game two, I am like completely happy. You know, what a great best of five this was.
uh, very well earned from Solky. Maybe he's going to win his first championship, Tasteless, in uh, ASL. Yeah, this is uh, this guy's a real threat, man. And again, I mean, you could take out Bisu. I would not be worried about him versus any Protoss. But this is the thing with Sulky. Sometimes Sulky looks like untouchable. Like mm -hmm. he he managed to recover. And keep in mind, like after the rush happens, both players are in a race, independent from each other, uh, trying to develop. And the fact that Sulky mustered this kind of an army and set up the tactical drops that then really uh, stopped Bisu from getting to where he needed to be in the game. Beautiful yeah. stuff. Yeah, super well done from Solky. Like, he got up to those four bases really cleanly, I think. Just strategically, the drop was such a good play here. I mean, it, obviously, drops are good on Odyssey because that back base is really hard to defend. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, obviously, if you if you go for something like mass drop, it's easy to attack. Great stuff, man. We love to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, well, guys, we're going to go to an interview now. Mudio, 아, 너무 오랜만에 4강 올라온 것 같아요. 그러니까 진짜 이기고도 너무 얼떨떨했고 이게 진짜 4강이 맞나? 이런 생각도 들 정도로 너무 오랜만이어서 팬분들한테 좀 너무 죄송하고 4강 올라와서 좀 진짜 좋은 모습 보여드리고 싶다는 생각밖에 안 드네요. 네. 두 선수 모두 오늘 빠르게 3대 0의 스코어를 예상하셨지만 역시나 그 자신감답게 풀세트 접전이 이어졌습니다. 특히 마지막 세트 오디세이에서의 경기는 정말 눈을 뗄수 없을 정도로 계속해서 좀 숨막히는 경기들이 이어졌는데 지, 캐논이 지어지기 전 타임에 히드라 난입도 조금 실패를 했고 김태경 선수가 병력 조합이 갖춰진 상태에서 김민철 선수가 조금은 어렵지 않을까 하는 흐름으로 흘러갔거든요. 하지만 김민철 선수의 묘수는 히드라 드랍이었던 것 같아요. 어 아무래도 그 맵이 좀 이제 투스와 가스가 많은 맵이어가지고 어, 다카칸을 좀 예상을 한. 있었거든요. 그래가지고 이제 미터 안 썼던 게 이제 좋은 수가 되지 않았나 생각 들고요. 아 그냥 지금 아무 생각이 없네요. 그냥 머리에 그냥 머리가 지금 비어 있어가지고 그냥 기쁜 거밖에 없어요 지금 생각이. 오늘 승리를 가져갔던 1 세트나 3 세트를 보면 사실 김민철 선수는 좀 철벽의 운영을 보여줬던 저그 선수 중에 한 명이었는데 오늘은 좀 빠르게 무기를 꺼내들어서 휘두르는 좀 오린성 빌드를 보여주신 것 같아요. 특히 김태경 선수가 선택한 맵에서 이런 전략을 쓰셨다는 거 어떤 계획이 좀 있었을까요? 어, 오히려 오늘 그냥 좀 공격적으로 해보고 싶다라는 생각이 들었어요. 약간 맵을 떠나서 특히 근데 상경기 네메시스 같은 경우에는 사실. 너무 맵이 하기가 싫더라고요. 너무 힘든 맵이어가지고 그냥 올인을 했는데 그게 너무 잘 통했던 것 같고 어 그냥 오늘 생각한 수는 좀잘 통했는데 저도 좀 아쉬운 부분이 있었어가지고 그점좀 보완해서 오도록 하겠습니다. 김민철 선수가 정말 오랜만에 시드를 획득하고 이제 4강 경기를 준비하셔야 할 텐데요. 아무래도 다전제에서 꽤나 오랜 시간 김민철 선수를 괴롭혔던 이런 기억들을 오늘 좀 극복하셨기 때문에 4강은 오늘보다는 조금 더 편안한 마음으로 좀 임하실 수 있을 것 같은데요. 상대가 김지동 선수입니다. 어, 이런 말하기 좀 뭐한데 잘하는 선수라고 생각한 적 없어요. 그래가지고 4강 제가 봤을 때 저는 좀 편할 것 같아요. 네. 김지성 선수가 현재 ASL 내에서 저그전 10연승이거든요. 인정하지 않으시나요? 어, 10연승이었나요? 네. 어, 인정하겠습니다. <웃음> 잘하네요. 네. <웃음> 네. <웃음> 김민철 선수와 김지성 선수의 이 4강전도 무척이나 기대가 되는데요. 오늘 아마 정말 많은 에너지를 김민철 선수가 경기를 하면서 쏟아 부으셨을 것 같아서 빨리 체력적으로도 좀 회복을 하고 연습에 다시 돌입을 하셔야 될것 같아요. 자 그동안 또 팬분들은 경기를 기다리고 계실 텐데 어떤 준비를 또 해오실 작정이실까요? 어... 오프라인 무대에서 다전제에서 좀 좋은 모습을 보여드린 적이 없어가지고 오늘을 계기로 4강에 또 제가 또 테란전 하면 또저 아니겠습니까? 아 그렇죠. 네. 테란전 제가 4강에서 좀 멋있는 경기 한번 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 김민철 선수가 결승에 올라가게 된다면 정말 많은 동료들이 또 현장을 찾아주실 것 같다는 생각이 들어요. 오늘 8강 경기도 많은 동료들이 또 찾아주셨고 응원해주신 동료들 많으실 것 같은데요. 한 말씀 전해주시죠. 
어, 일단은 뭐 NS 저희 이제 남순이 사장님도 중계 중이시더라고요. 그 항상 감사드리고요. 오늘 또 이렇게 응원 아 주신 우리 유선아 단전님 그리고 많은 NS 이런들이 많이 찾아와 줘 가지고 좀 너무 힘 났던 것 같습니다. 네, 오늘 너무 고맙고요. 어, 4강 준비 잘 하도록 하겠습니다. 네, 오랜만에 4강에서 모습을 볼수 있게 된 김민철 선수 멋진 모습 기대하겠습니다. 진출 축하드립니다. 네, 감사합니다. 자 이렇게 해서 이번 시즌 두 번째 4강 진출자 저거 김민철 선수와 함께 했습니다. All right. Um, there you have it, man. Bisu falls to Solki. I'll tell you, I, I've been rooting for Bisu to kind of advance to, you know, the next level mm. in, in, in kind of... I mean, how long has ASL been out our toes? Has it been five years or something? Maybe... Yeah, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess if we want to kind of refer to this as, you know, the, the modern era of StarCraft, I've been waiting for him to really kind of take an ASL and it just doesn't seem like he's there mm. yet. You know, Jadong, someone I'd still put Jadong maybe like a tier below Bisu, and then certainly yeah. that's the case with his results. But we just don't seem to have Bisu getting to where he needs to be. I, I do wonder if he wants to maybe try to get a little bit more variety. You know, it's, I mean, it's okay to lose that last game, but ultimately it, it's the cheeses that cost him, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I guess. But I mean, he is doing well, like round of eight, round of four. Uh, those are those are pretty close, and to lose to Solky, I don't think you can blame anyone. Like Solky's one of the only people I think could beat Flash in a tournament, for instance. Um, guys, we are only halfway done with the round of eight. We've got mm -hmm. some great matches coming up: Light versus Rush, and then Snow versus Hero. Um, I mean, these should be extremely close ones as well. Snow is is quietly looking extremely deadly, especially in matches. Uh, outside of ASL, but, you know, Hero, sometimes I feel like he can just kill anybody. Light versus Rush, this is going to be an interesting one as well. I feel like Light is still the favorite. It's, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like when we talk about him in a cast, it's always so straightforward. He's just so good at what he does. Yeah. Um, and I'm expecting possibly to have Light in the finals once more. Yeah, yeah, I am kind of favoring him. Uh, but honestly, both Snow and Hero can beat him. I don't know about Rush. Like, maybe Rush can pull out the best TVTs of his life and take down Light. But Snow has been killing every Terran lately, and he looked fantastic against Zerg in his all-Zerg group last round. So, I mean, honestly, at this point, Tasteless, when I look at who's left over, it does feel like any of the remaining six players can end up winning. Yeah, I totally That's, agree, man. I it's didn't expect very... to say that, but it, I feel <laughs> that way now. Still a very exciting ASL, still a very tough one to call who's actually going to become our champion. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. And again, we hope you uh, continue to support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash ASL English. We love you, and we will see you in match three of the round of eight. Bye-bye.